Okay, options look good. It is time. Let's get this started. New game. We'll go with English. I think we'll go with English. Ooh, logic difficulty. You can go gentle, easy, I'm guessing. Kind is normal. Mean is hard. I'm gonna keep them both on medium. I think we'll be okay there. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, famous last words, right? <laughs> that was wild. Trigger happy havoc. So that was like why the loading screen, the main menu was like a gun chamber. The massive high school towers all are over all the other buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. We don't know who's saying this. Hope's Peak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable, a government funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope, <laughs> bold, in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. <laughs> oh, good luck with that, Ellaby. And Hearts, you thought that was Iron Maiden? Oh, you like, yeah, those things with all the spikes inside, right, Hearts? Yeah, I haven't seen one of those in like a movie or anything for a long time. That's great, Phantasm. I mean, that's that's going to help you sleep a lot, honestly. Just knowing that you did everything you possibly could, what was going to happen was going to happen. And still, of course, so sorry, but good on you for running around and doing all that. And yes, uh, Hasifa, I am super excited for the new Monkey Island. I can't wait. I want to replay the old ones before that. There are two things you need to attend this school. <laughs> Money and privilege? One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student could enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students is us. <laughs> Not that I like to talk about credit. I don't know how it pops up, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I will be taking no suggestions. I won't mention it again. I won't say anything. Let's see. Is that all about the game? Like the different sections of it? Logic? Action? Oh, the, how the difficulties work. I see what you're talking about, Hasiba. Thank you, dude. Hmm. I think, I think we'll be okay on the difficult thing we chose. So yeah, that's us going into the school. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. How's the volume? Is that voice too low? Is the music too loud? Let me know if I should adjust that. So our name is Makoto Naegi. <laughs> As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. Yeah, I kind of think the music might be a little loud. Can I change it at any time? Let's see. I can go to controls. Don't think I can change that right away. I might have to wait till I get to a menu or something. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do. But it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like, if you ask me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, it'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. <laughs> even among the average, I'm completely average. So I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. So how did you get into this school? Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still, here I am, standing in front of the, uh, in front of the Anything But Ordinary Hope Speak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got to be this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel this way. What you have to understand is, well, 
let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Let's see, there's like a chat log that we have. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are the truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. All I saw was talk about ultimate students who are way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. <laughs> has nothing to do with like school, like grades and that kind of thing. They're just popular music. I guess maybe they're good at music class. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. <laughs> yeah, here comes the big exposition dump, right, Sheely? There's also the ultimate baseball star. Look at that baseball just getting flattened. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Looks so angry right there. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. None of this has to do with glasses or grades. I love it. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader too. What kind of high school is this? <laughs> The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. Looks like he had like a metal eye or like a light for an eye. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler, <laughs> I love it, the ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, hey, like that actually requires school, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who'd wander into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. Let's see, and Sheely, the talents in the series don't have to be school related at all. Yeah, I can tell, right? Um, the school just takes in people that are the best of whatever they do. So it's almost not even like a school necessary, just a conglomeration of people. I guess not for the necessary of school. Like, <laughs> I'm curious what kind of classes are in here. Let's see, you see, there were a few students who I couldn't find any info on, no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? We are the ultimate average student. Could they just be average students like me, without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality, but beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked up to come on this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glass at the ex a glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected, and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. Honestly, I would have, uh, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer. But after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. Kind of reminds me of that game that Relentless requested a while back when, I uh, can't remember the name of it. We psycho, psycho something where we got accepted into that business and we had no idea why they hired us. And it turns out they were like hunting witches or something. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could almost feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clenched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all the incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting still isn't for a while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. And let's see, you, you like watching lore videos for the series? 
that's pretty cool, No, You love it when the game has a lot of good lore behind it. You know, you can really dig deep. And then see, so the kids are still in high school. They're just taking the best of the best. So they're still going to have regular classes, even though it seems like a lot of these people would never even go to school in the first place or just have like a private tutor. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step toward the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7, 10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help calm me down a bit. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having to look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into the Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. What the hell? <laughs> Everything's going weird. What the? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began. And how my life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized, the reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy was because I had ultimate good luck. It was so that I could experience ultimate despair. Oh no. Welcome to Despair High School. <laughs> I love that. It, lo it looks like a Las Vegas sign. This is the prologue. And you posted a 90 minute video of a person trying to map the timelines of Command and Conquer and how it relates to the time travel. That is right. There is time travel in Command and Conquer, isn't there, Hasifa? That's cool. Okay, do we want to save? Hell yes. I always want to save. Does this game let you save anywhere, or you have to find specific spots? <sighs> now we're in the real school. Mm -hmm. What? Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but... What was I doing here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Well, that looks cool. Welcome to Hope's Peak Academy. Firstly, we like to explain the basic controls. Hey, welcome back, Jada. You can use the left stick to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you, you can interact with, you can press the A button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Oh cool, I love it when I can save anytime. Use the directional buttons in L and R to adjust your viewpoint. Why don't you look around the classroom? We got a note here. Well, while I'm doing this, let's see if I can change the volume at all. Still don't see an option for volume controls. I like the pseudo 3D look. That looks pretty cool. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide. It's some kind of cheap looking pamphlet and there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, the school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Okay, so you kind of like pixel hunt a little bit in this game. Yeah, it's very much an anime style game, Jada. What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. If I were, and if I were to knock on it. Yep, definitely metal. Thick too, very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Good question. 
And there's a camera here. Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in, I guess. They have to keep weirdos just from wandering in. And we got a bulletin board. Oh, a monitor up here. There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. And there's the clock. What time is it now? We're supposed to be there at 8 a.m. Jeez, I can't believe it's 8 o'clock. Or already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? And see, kind of a mix of Phoenix Wright and Zero Escape. I really enjoyed Zero, Zero Escape. Oh, and it's made by the same developer? Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, I played through one of those games with Andy. Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is... I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall. Then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows, it's like it's a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. You can leave the classroom by pressing the B button. Okay, I think we're done. Let's see. I wonder if there's any other controls. Oh, that's cool. If you press Y, it shows you the things you can actually highlight. That's really handy. Okay, instead of leaving, how do I get to like a... I'm looking for like actual options where you can like save and stuff. I was hoping I could change the volumes, but it doesn't seem to let me. I might have to get a bit further. Okay, let's leave the area. Jeez, this hallway is kind of weird too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you and me both. Well, for now, I'll just head out to the main hall. Use the left stick to move through the hallway. Hold down the B button while moving to run. Oh, you actually get to move in 3D. That's pretty cool. Also, you can press the Y button to bring up a map. Press the Y button again to close the map. How convenient. <laughs> I like how they kind of hype themselves up. Oh, this is neat. Yeah, I didn't expect this at all. That's the room we just came from. Spare Hotel. The Spare Hotel. I guess it's a place for people to stay overnight. But anyway, I need to get to the main hall. What's down this way? Okay, we'll just have to wait a little bit, Hasifa. Huh? That makes sense. It looks like it might be a restroom. Oh, AV room. The AV room. It's locked. This place is locked out. The school store. I guess it's not open. <laughs> it looks like it's a crime scene. That might be it. That looks like an exit. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone was already there. Whoa! Whoa, hey! Another new kid? <laughs> I love all the character designs. Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. 15's not a lot of people, even for like just one class. That's nice. Um, standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everybody who'd gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel some kind of aura coming from each of them. Yeah, especially with how much like cosplay and stuff goes on with this game, I imagine the characters are probably people's favorite thing. Hmm. 
How's it going? My name's Makoto, or yeah, Makoto Nagi. Sorry I'm late. A bunch of stuff happened. And then all of a sudden, I was just asleep. Huh? Whoa, you too? Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of the doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. <laughs> That's a lot of people for one place, right? Um, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Got it. Just a moment. There's something else we must address. Listen to me. <laughs> He's like Phoenix, right? Uh, Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were aware the meeting was to start at 8 a.m. sharp. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you, and then you must accept your due punishment. Jeez. What? What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. Seriously. Oh, happy birthday again, Christian. I hope you had an awesome birthday. You have a great night. Thank you for the lurk, dude. <laughs> Me snitching on people? Never. Never. Snitches get stitches, Christian. That's right. Everyone, just calm down. Listen, we don't all go around and introduce ourselves. Huh? The hell? Now's no time for freaking introductions. <laughs> Maybe, but it may be a good place to at least find out who we all are before digging into bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other when we don't know each other's names? That's a good point. Um... All right, I cannot do like voices for every female. Unfortunately, my range is very limited with like higher pitched voices. I have a fairly deep voice. So you guys get mostly the same female voice for every female character. <laughs> they just threw like eight of them at once. <laughs> okay, so let's get introductions out of the way. Then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now and see three weeks of short working weeks and four days a week. Hooray, nice, Hasifa, that is awesome, dude. So full work days or do you have to work like 12 hours um, to do that? And Easter Friday, Easter Monday, oh, all the different holidays. Nice, dude, I don't get any of those days off. I'd have to request a day off. So I guess this is as good as a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on that Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. So aim at a student and press A to talk to them. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so keep track of how they go. <laughs> I'm screwed! Alright, let's just go left to right. There's a few other things we can look at too. Is this a gun? That surveillance camera has what looks like a gun attached to it. But there's no way that's a real gun, right? And then there is this thing right here. Holy cow, what's with that huge metal hatch? It looks like the kind of thing you'd see in a secret military base or something. I was thinking Fallout. It kind of looks like a Fallout shelter. This is the same main hall I was in before, right? This door definitely wasn't here then, though. And there's another one here. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, same thing. All right, let's talk to these guys. And Hearts, you are not taking any chances about that gun thing. Be careful when you're on camera, which there's also cameras in the classroom. So I think we're always being watched in here. Some kind of social experiment, maybe. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. <laughs> I love the voices. I wish it was all voiced. Ultimate moral compass. So that's like his... Uh, I guess, personality. So that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community public morals committee. They say he respects rules above all else, earning him the title of ultimate moral compass. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Shirley. Secret government bases, huh? Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Neigi, right? <laughs> That's a good name. A strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? 
<laughs> and you keep that name from losing its value. You must devote yourself every single day. Got it. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it, right? Right. This guy is kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. I love how they bounce when you like try to talk to them. Oh, she's like super shy, isn't she? It almost sounds like she's about to like cry. So she's the ultimate writing prodigy. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot up to the top of every, one, every hottest men pole. Oh, because the book was about fishermen. <laughs> Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes, and all her books are instant bestsellers. Which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey-dovey type, what with her masterpiece being a romance and all. What's your problem? What? It's not polite to stare, you know. What the heck? <laughs> Her voice isn't matching up with what she's saying. Uh, stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature. Filthy creature? No, I just thought... I know what you just thought. You just thought you'd never seen such an ugly woman. You just thought it was so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. I'm telling you! Don't bother trying to lie to me. I know it's true. Otherwise, you... I know you can't stand looking at me. Anyway... Whatever. I don't really care. I'm used to it. She's got some self-esteem issues. Holy crap. Wow. Talk about an inferior inferiority complex. I was way off about what a successful author would be like. Okay, I'm just going to double check to see if I have any options for sound yet. No, not quite there yet. kind of a Sailor Moon outfit, isn't it? This is the ultimate pop sensation. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing, and that pleasant scent I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to this school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I think he was about to say that he used to know her when they were kids or something. And Sheely, it's the classic thing where they have a couple of voiced quips that they say at the beginning of a sentence. Oh, okay. It's not necessarily voiceover, but more just like a, hey, it's me talking kind of thing. <laughs> I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Huh? Did you hear me? <laughs> we weren't saying that out loud. I'm psychic. Uh, kidding. I just have really good intuition. the hell would you intuit that? She's a sharp one. Hey, um... Hey, by any chance... Now what? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Oh, does she recognize us? Hey, Makoto, did... Just hold on! Jeez, you guys. How long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Uh, um... S sorry just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. You're, you're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makato. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sa Sayaka had something she wanted to say. But it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? <laughs> I like that they give me kind of a bass voice that I can try to mimic a little bit. Back to my golden daytime popcorn. What's golden popcorn? I <laughs> just imagine um, oh gay time popcorn there you go that's even better <laughs> what is golden gay time popcorn we always have two types of popcorn in our house we have butter and kettle corn 
I don't like them both. It just depends if I want something sweet or not. So he is the ultimate baseball star. We saw him earlier. I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. What happened to his hair? And that superb athlete specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? huh? What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... Give me a break. What? Were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was expecting more of a, you know, sporty-looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you look then. <laughs> what? Oh man, you found the picture of me playing baseball. Seriously, I hate that picture. What the crap? This is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of the national championship regulations. Jeez, seriously? But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not going to dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. You can't really dye it back to normal, because <laughs> it'll fade again. You have to just keep dyeing it, I guess. Um, actually, can I be totally honest with you? You know... I don't like baseball, like, at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced, and he was still his team's star player? He's some kind of prodigy. And Hasifa, the iconic combination of daytime vanilla biscuit crumbs and toffee you love, now irresistibly delicious morsels of... Oh, this is like a bagged popcorn treat. Isn't it, Hasifa? Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah! As soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. That is intense. A dream for the future? <laughs> My only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar, and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like, super cool to the max. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball star. And then this guy. <laughs> Me by my nickname, the Alpha and the Omega. I don't mind. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ultimate fanfic creator. Why am I not surprised? By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. I once sold 10,000 copies of my uh, fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Hmm. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I'd tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. Arbo, what's up, Arbo? How you doing, dude? How was the rest of your weekend? Hope you're doing well. However... The words of such... Idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fan fiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nagy, that you would comprehend its greatness immediately. Mm -hmm. For my work is filled with the deepest meaning. Oh, what, what kind of meaning? Doing okay? That's good to hear. That's better than doing bad. <laughs> what have you been up to? Oh, that was weird. I like pressed a button and it looked like the text disappeared. Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. <laughs> okay, now to talk to those five people over there. Oh my gosh, this is so many characters at once. Hey, I'm Aoi Asahina, but my friends just call me Hina. I like her voice. She's the ultimate swimming bro. Uh, Aoi Asahina. She's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. 
Let's see, and Arbo, about as good as you can be this moment. Uh, you remember mentioning that your uncle passed. I do remember that, Arbo, yeah. And unfortunately, ended up losing two more family members shortly after. Oh my gosh. That's insane, Arbo. I'm so sorry to hear that. Was it uh, all the same thing or just completely unrelated incidents? That's awful, dude. Three people all at once? My gosh. Yeah, she has cool vibes. I like her. Owie, thank you, Owie. The combination of her ability, appearance, and um, proportions has been widely discussed online. What do you mean, proportions? Hmm. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Neigi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. That is, or it is that. You got it. Sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. I wish that worked. Yeah. Makoto Neigi. Makoto Neigi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? Huh? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you got to write it on your hand three times. I never heard that before. That's kind of cool. I've never heard that in my life. Mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Mm. Um... <laughs> Well, I have no idea. I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easygoing and bursting with energy. She seems pretty cool. And it was completely unrelated and unexpected. No sickness or anything, so we were just blindsided. Oh my gosh. Are they all um, family nearby, Arbo? Or are they like spread out or anything? Oh, that really sucks, dude. I'm so sorry. Let's see her. Nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. What is she? She's the ultimate programmer. <laughs> Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here. Nice to meet you. Huh? Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Um, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm sorry. Is this your favorite character, Sheely? <laughs> hey, how's it going, Shan? Good to see you, dude. How was your weekend? And there's a couple times that John has said what the pro tag was about. Seriously, we were like the same brain cell, just like me and you guys sometimes. And two in South Florida and one in Georgia. Are you, I know you're in, are you're still in Florida now, right, Arbo? Or are you already moved away? Or did you move permanently away for a job? I know you were in Florida, and then with your job, I forget if that was in Florida or not. I thought you were moving somewhere. Like Texas or something? <laughs> I remember you moving. You traveled a lot <laughs> since we've been chatting. <laughs> but you don't have to apologize for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chihiro... Fujisaki is known for all the cutting-edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her legion of fans. <laughs> Aww. Okay, it was Texas. Okay, cool. So, sounds like you might have some traveling going on in the near future. Uh, but it would probably be good to see family as well go back. Never a fun time to do it, to, you know, have to go someplace for a funeral necessarily, but... At the same time, it'd be good to be around family in these kind of times. Um, hey, so listen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> you guys know people that apologize for everything all the time, even if there is no apology required? Uh, what are you apologizing for now? Um, well, just because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? <laughs> Huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. She's great at apologizing. <laughs> this is awkward. Um, can I ask you your name? My name is... Kyoko Kirigiri. Sounds super serious. 
She's the ultimate me. I don't know. She's pretty tight lipped, huh? But you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so what are you doing at this school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. <sighs> no, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. Hi! I'm Junko Enishima. Charmed, I'm sure. Whoa. <laughs> that, that voice could get intense after a little while. She's the fashionista. Okay. That smile kind of creeps me out. A little too big. Um, anybody would recognize this one. But then, like, her mouth is, like, super small in these pictures. Just when she smiles, it turns into a monster. Uh, she's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> well, of course, those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Yeah, you know, edited to hell and back, like with computers and junk. Oh, have you drawn this character before? That's awesome. Or which of these characters is your favorite to draw, Sheely? I'm guessing you're the programmer, your favorite character. Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Come on, don't sound so surprised. You're going to make me all depressed. Totally. It's totally normal these days to Photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by what certain dangerous by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin to look all ceramic and porcelain. Oh, so many dreams are getting crushed today. <laughs> Name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet you. Whoa, we got some swearing up in here. All right. <laughs> I wasn't sure there's going to be that kind of game. I think it is rated M though. I like that name, Mondo. He's the biker gang leader. Mondo Awada, huh? Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. And you also did draw Jihiro, but Junko was your favorite to draw because of the design. Oh, that's awesome. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. You mean uh, the fashionista or this guy's hair? This guy's hair is something else. It almost looks like it's not real because of the difference between his lower hair and his upper hair. Um, nice to meet Yo. you. Hell yeah. I better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. Well, that was quick. These four over here are the only ones left. Man, you get a crash course in the very beginning of this game, don't you? I am Sakura Okami. This <laughs> is it just me, or did that voice actor sound like a little kid trying to play a real big tough guy? Mr. Corncob Hair, there it is. Yeah, that was the guy. Oh, geez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. Uh, the day I say something like that out loud, that's just what I said. Whoops. Um, they say it out loud is the day I get turned into a human. That makes sense why the voice was like that then. Yeah, because it was a female voice just sounding real tough. Okay. But now I remember she competed in the martial arts tournament in America and won despite being a girl. Second favorite character alert. Nice. 
She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. Yeah, what weight class does she fight in? Holy cow. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Even some think she's the closest known relative to the primates, the famed missing link. That's rude. Any incoming Hope Speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. That's not really what martial arts are all about, though. Martial arts is supposed to be very respectful, self-defense. <laughs> you shouldn't feel danger. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey. Uh, uh, yes? I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at my body. Um, what are you... I see. Muscular quality and quantity is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Hmm. Huh. What a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. <laughs> Look at those thighs! Holy crap! Name's Byakuya Togami. What could he be the ultimate? Business major? Affluent progeny. Never mind. I was way off. Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. That's the most half-ass introduction I've ever heard. But there really isn't anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Bayuk Bakuya, uh, wait, Bayakuya Togami. He's the heir of apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. Oh, some kind of business person. And this is a fan favorite character. Thank you for letting me know all these things. I wonder why he's the fan favorite. He's already started managing business operations and his own personal assets are well vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned from him from that Hope's Peak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away. I'm sick of looking at you. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level, like a king in training. Biyakuya. Biyakuya. Thank you. I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. I like this guy's vibe. <laughs> I love that hair. He's the ultimate clairvoyant. Nice. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? Uh, okay, I give up. Huh? What happened? You're serious. I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously. I totally saw it. You saw what? Hmm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewskis sometime and get a real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? We're not allowed to drink. We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times. See, and well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. She kind of reminds me of um, that doll character that was helping us in Deathmark that we streamed recently. I do not think we have been introduced. And her name is Celeste. Ludenberg. Celeste was a fantastic game. I love that game. And she's the ultimate gambler. Nice. Celestia Luden, huh? <laughs> Ludenberg, it is my name. But if you don't mind, I would prefer you to call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Is this your favorite design? That hair, those curls. What does that remind me of? Catherine. I think one of the main characters in Catherine had hair kind of like that. Huh? Not as long, but similar style. Uh, of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. 
But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. Yeah, that doesn't sound Japanese at all. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg is the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say that she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title of Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. I look forward to getting to know you better. That must be a lie. <laughs> that smile's beyond deceptive. I better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Huh. Even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of uh, something. Hmm. Okay, time to get to business. This is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Um, listen. Well, you see... Uh, um... Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, that is true for all of the same. All of us, are, sorry, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? I mean, seriously? Just after each of us got in the main hall, we lost consciousness. And then we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird. And, uh, every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit! <laughs> Whoa! Exactly. That's why we're all freaking out. That's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows and the classes and hallways were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Are you for real? Plus, all my stuff's missing, even my cell phone. Um. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere either. PDA. Were those even very popular when the, the Vita was popular? I don't know. Not sure about that. And then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some kind of giant metal hatch. What does this mean? But there wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What the heck? What's it doing there? Aww. Maybe we got caught up in some kind of like, you know, crime or something. Is it? Like... Yeah, very interesting art style, Sheely. I dig it. Uh, what's like a, a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come on. Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up. I bet this is just all part of the school's orientation procedure. You know? Yeah, I'm sure that's it. So I'm just going to take it easy for a bit. I see. So you think they wanted us to do something to surprise us? Huh. Well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. You know what I mean. I was up way late last night. I could use a little shut-eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then, it began. Uh-oh. Hey, somebody's ringing the doorbell. Maybe they'll let us out. Probably not. Oh, is this a creepy bear again? Ahem, ahem. Testing, testing. Mic check, one, two. This is a test of the school broadcast system. So we're still in a school, apparently. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students. Would like to begin the entrance ceremony at right now. Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. Interesting. That's all. I'll be waiting. Huh? What the hell was that just now? Goodbye. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey, hey what are you gonna take off just like that? Could it be? True. That's true. Although I wonder how functional it really is. <laughs> I like that though. Retro tech nerd. 
Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped up for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank God it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. You know? All right, guess I'll head out too. Wonder what they got planned for us next. Huh. Uh... Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why'd they have to go and kill the mood? Huh? Oh, wait for me, I wanna go with you. <laughs> That's it then, huh? I will see you all there. Anyway. Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go too. <laughs> Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one. Uh, um, but this doesn't seem right. This is bad. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. However... Uh, maybe, but just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. If we do not move forward, we will learn nothing. The only choice is to pull ahead. I guess she's right. But still, I'm kind of... No, really nervous. We don't have a choice, but have to go. They said to go to the gym, right? Oh, we can save. Nice. I'll go ahead and keep multiple saves. I'm not sure if we're ever going to have to like reload an old checkpoint, but it's always a good idea to keep some extra saves. I'm assuming we're just supposed to exit, but maybe I can talk to them more. Something weird is going on here, right? It's not just me. <laughs> Knowing her, she upgraded to a PDA? Oh, that's awesome. <sighs> yeah, what was popular in 2010? Were we still doing the Angry Birds or something on mobile devices? Listen. I know how you feel, but all we can do now is check it out, right? Huh. True. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. Well... Are you okay? Is everyone okay? <laughs> what the hell? Is this some kind of bad joke? <sighs> Shit. Shit. What kind of hell, or what the hell kind of game are they playing? What was that with the announcement? It was like totally creepy. <laughs> oh wow, you can actually turn quite a lot here. What is that in the corner? File cabinet? A mailbox. There's nothing inside. We should check the same over here. Another TV? There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. I'll see if a Mass Effect 2, Red Dead Redemption, StarCraft 2, Call of Duty Black Ops, and Halo Reach. But that was like for consoles, though. Those are the big console games. What was like playable on like mobile devices back then? That was kind of the still just getting out of the dark ages of like mobile gaming. It was very, very limited. Although the iPhone had been out for a little while, so I'm sure there were some games. Okay, so B to exit. Leave the area? Yes. I dig that it plays in first person. That's so different. Oh, Infinity Blade. I remember that game. That was like an Unreal Engine game that everybody hyped up because it looked so cool, right? I do remember that game. It was kind of like a turn-based RPG sort of thing. Okay, that goes to the hotel. I'm just trying to find a uh, conference room. Don't know what this is. It's, I better might make, make my way, or not conference room, gym. I better make my way to the gym. I need to find out what's going on. Oh, that's right. There is a map. Good call. Okay. Oh, and you can move around with the map open. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm loving that. I wish all games could do this quite this easily. I think I gotta go up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> probably. She would probably suit that up, hey, wouldn't she? On. God, I had no idea this Hope's Peak Academy place was going to be such a pain in my balls. 
It really hadn't been that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Hell, that place is, this place is even worse. Uh, um... Why isn't there anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't th that, like, seriously not good? But they're just trying to spook us. They'll take those metal pieces down later. I'm sure of it. Huh. All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gave. Does she keep saying the same thing but with different words? <laughs> Ugh, shit. Well, hell, it ain't like I'm scared of nothing. Let's just get, go get this over with. Hey, damn it. Hey, where's whoever called us here? Mondo, stop. No run. Well, I too shall go. Oh my god, that noise! <laughs> hey, wait! Don't leave me here all alone! Okay, time for some more tutorial action! <laughs> yes! You can press the Y button to observe the room you're in. Observing will display what people and objects you can interact with. Sorry for the late notice. That's cute. Okay, well, I did find that out by myself. Does that save any. Doesn't change those screens. There's like something behind her. Oh, the sword. A display case. There are all kinds of trophies and plaques inside. Of course, all the students who go here are ultimate, right? But this is probably just a tiny fraction of all their awards. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. I love it, Sheely. Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. Um, Where are all the other structures? Why are we the only ones here? This is bad. I'm totally getting a bad vibe right now. I like that you can change the angle a little bit. It actually kind of makes them sort of look like a cardboard cutout, doesn't it? From the side there. That's kind of cool. Oh my goodness. Jay Birds live. Welcome Raiders to John Cadia. How are you doing, Jay? How you doing, Max? It's great to see you, dude. How was your stream, Jay Birds? Let me give you a shout out real quick. We are currently playing a new game to me, the first Dongon Rampa. I think I'm saying that correctly. As close as I can. Have you played it before, Jay Birds? I have never played one of these. I've never even seen one before. So this is all brand new to me. And you're doing Pokemon Legends, nice. Now that's that's not the new one, right? The new one's called like Pokemon Arceus or something, or or is that the actual? Oh no, it is there. It just got cut off on my Twitch chat. There it is. How are you liking the new one? Um, I have not tried it yet. I only played the Let's Go Pikachu one, but uh, that one looked like it was much more open world, sort of Breath of the Wild kind of thing. How are you digging it? That's awesome. Thank you again so much for the word, Jay, or the raid. I appreciate that. And this song is so good, you have it in your chill playlist. I love video game music for like chill music. It's so nice. I'll definitely be adding some of these to my playlist for sure. And you were into uh, Rung Rampa back when it was being translated in blog posts? Oh, you're hardcore, Jay. That's awesome. You know, I've never played a fan translated game before. There's a few I'm kind of interested in, like the very first, um, what was it called? Clock Tower game it was on Super Nintendo. Never came out in any English territory, but somebody has done like a fan translation. I would check that out. That's awesome. You're hardcore, Jay. I love that. <laughs> Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I, I kind of, I think I've seen a little bit about that. Somebody was really excited for that game when it was coming out. It's more of like just a, like a dungeon focused game, right? Not so much like exploration and catching Pokemon, much more just dungeon fights. Michael and Drolshenka, welcome you too. How are you doing? We almost didn't stream today. I started the stream, worked for about 30 minutes, and then we were doing our little race at the beginning, and the stream just totally crapped out. My uh, data usage dropped to almost nothing, and it was buffering for everybody. It took about 10 minutes, almost 15 minutes, and it eventually fixed itself, so we got back into it. But that was kind of scary. Kind of scary. Glad it's working now. I think we haven't had any problems since. But how are you doing, Draw Shaker and Michael? Good to see you. Oh, and Jay also finished Jack 2. Nice job. I remember Jack 2 being pretty tough. Actually, all those Jack and Daxter games had some really tricky sections. But how did you like it, Jay Birds? What'd you think? 
So this one, Michael, is I think kind of, um, I don't know if you ever played the Ace Attorney games, but kind of like one of those, or maybe like that horror game we played recently, um, the Deathmark game, uh, where it's kind of like a visual novel, very anime style. And you blame the internet service provider we have. It sucks, Droll. I wish we had more options. I wish we could get fiber here in our town, but nope, not quite yet. And Max, guess what? Uh, the buffering issue wasn't the BIOS router or anything like that. It was Twitch. Someone on a Reddit said to have two tabs or windows on the same stream open and it fixed it. Oh, how weird. And like that buffering that's happened for you on every stream. So having two tabs open on a single um, browser causes the buffering. Is that right, Max? I had never, I had no idea. That sucks. And she, the back then, the translation wasn't ultimate students. The fan translation labeled the students as super duper high school. <laughs> that's almost kind of better, actually. I kind of like that. And your ISP is Comcast? Oh, so unreliable. Same, Michael, same Comcast, yeah. And super high school level is how you remember it? That's so funny. Oh, having two tabs fixes the buffering if you only have one of buffers. And is it, it does it happen consistently all the time? Or um, is it just like once in a while it pops up, Max? What a pain in the butt. That's no fun at all. <laughs> Comcast sucks so bad. And you had a nostalgic moment in Spider's Chat last night? Chat with an old friend of ours. Oh, that's so cool, Drill Shank. I'm so glad to hear that. It's so good to catch up with somebody you haven't chatted with in a while. On every stream, every few minutes. Oh, how annoying. Well, at least there's a solution. It may take like double your bandwidth, but you know, at least it works. Better than nothing, right? Okay, let's jump back into this. We are on the very first day. And well, the mouse seems to work pretty well on this. I'm using a controller, though. Um, we're trying to make it to the gym. The creepy teddy bear character told us to go there. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, I think I talked to all of them. I love the uh, the screen moving around. It's really cool. Hey, Chavo. Welcome back, Chavo. How you doing? And it's been going on for two weeks. And you guess Twitch broke something on the website as people with mobile apps are fine. I'll have to do some more testing. I don't think I've ever seen it. I wonder if it depends on the browser or your operating system as well. And Shili, you like that a lot more. You love Makoto being super duper high school luxster. <laughs> That's a great name. Uh, this school has a lot of TVs. They couldn't all just be for that weird school broadcast, could they? And another camera up here. Another surveillance camera. I feel like we're being watched every second. I don't like it. All right, this is the gym, I think. And the browser doesn't matter, although running a secondary copy of the same stream in a different browser fixes it. That's really weird. Huh, I wonder what that could be. There is very minimal voice acting, Michael. Sometimes the characters will get full voices. Sometimes they just chime in with a little saying. So most of it is reading. Uh, uh, and Makoto, that's our main character, that's me. Uh, still filled with uneasy dread, I did what the announcement said and we went to the gym. And I saw what was waiting for us there. Oh yeah, so to give you an idea of what's going on in the game, Michael, and everybody that just joined, uh, we were invited to go to this very prestigious high school. And the high school only allows the best of the best in there. Not necessarily the best students, but they're best at something. Maybe they're the best biker gang leader. Maybe they're the best programmer. Maybe they're the, the best singer. Things like that. And for some reason, we're here, but we're not really the best at anything. So uh, maybe we're just lucky. <laughs> and then once we got in here, we seemed to get knocked out. And we woke up in a classroom. And we ran, we wandered around and found everybody else. And we're all trying to figure out what we're doing here. And there's this creepy teddy bear that's giving us instructions. Oh, it really does look like an entrance ceremony. Yo. See, I told ya, it's totally normal entrance ceremony stuff. Oh, and we won a lottery to get in? Essentially, yeah, being that lucky, right? Hero was right. But in a way, that just emphasized how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there, howdy, hello! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things right! See, every once in a while you get that kind of text, or voice acting. Oh, a cutscene. Oh, it was a lottery. Okay, I gotcha. I wonder why he didn't just say that initially. He was just talking about how he didn't know why he was picked. But just straight up lottery. Huh? 
teddy bear? I'm not a teddy bear. Yeah, you are. I am Monokuma! And I am this school's headmaster! <laughs> Seriously? It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was... What was I... What I was seeing was... It was utterly incomprehensible. Nice to meet you all. Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. And all that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. Say what? <laughs> what? That teddy bear can talk? <sighs> Calm down. I'm sure there's a speaker inside it. <laughs> I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. Master. I'm Monokuma, and your headmaster. See what? what? It moved. Ugh, shit. Seriously, man, calm down. It's probably just a remote control toy or something. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You've cut me deep, deeper than the Mariana Trench. <laughs> no, not you're the imposter. <laughs> I love that. And my hero Academy is our uh, Academy. Is that what this character's from, uh, Chavo? My remote control system is so complex, even the folks at NASA can't recreate or even comprehend it. Ah, but don't make me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dreams. I just couldn't bear that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Bear that? Really? You are unfortunate. Hmm. Now then, moving on. We must really hurry up and get started. Come on. <laughs> that was unbearable. Oh, it's an anime. Nothing to do with the game, Chavo. Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Now then. Quiet down now. Quiet down. Ah, okay. So, he has abandoned the gag. Everyone, stand at attention and bow. And good morning. You hear me? Good morning. <laughs> What's your problem? You, you don't have to say it back. Now then. Now then, let us commence with the most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life here will be like. Now, uh, make no mistake, you few students, uh, so full of potential, represent the hope of the world. And to protect such splendid hope, you will all live a, a communal life together solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Now then, regarding the end date for this communal life, there isn't one. In other words, you'll all be here until the day you die. Such is the school life you've been assigned. Oh my gosh. What did he just say? Until we die? Yep. Oh, but fear not. We have quite an abundant uh, budget, so you won't lack for all the common conveniences. Uh, hold on a second. That's the least of our worries right now. Hmm. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? It's true. I'm not... <laughs> the voice saying that, it's great. Oh, it was being compared to this, Sheely? Uh, since that anime follows a class at the most prestigious hero school, and each student has a superpower. Not too far off. Not too far off, Chavo. Nice. I am not screwing with you. I'm no liar. Of that, you can be 100% sure. Uh-huh. Ah, and just for your information, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. Cut off? So all those metal plates all over the school. They're there to keep us trapped in here? That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you yell and scream for help, help will not come. So with all of that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Hey, come on. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't care if it's the school or whoever is behind all this all. It's just a really bad joke. Yeah, cut this shit out. It isn't funny anymore. Unbelievable. 
You keep saying that this is a lie or a joke. A bunch of skeptics, all of you. What are you gonna do? But I guess you can't help it, huh? You grew up in an age where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you'll have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I speak the undeniable truth. Most unfortunate. Nothing to live here forever would be quite the problem. What's this? <laughs> yeah, right. Good call, Chavo. And uh, the headmaster of the UA High in My Hero Academia is a mouse, and the headmaster of Hope's Peak is a bear. The similarities continue. <laughs> Come now, what's the matter with you all? You decided of your own free will to attend Hope's Peak Academy, didn't you? And now, before the entrance ceremony is even finished, you've already decided you want to leave. Hey, um... Oh, but you know, I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. <laughs> really? Actually... As headmaster, I've crafted a special clause for those of you who would like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. Now then... Now, let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if someone were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That, my students, is the graduation clause. What? Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit, Sheely. <laughs> what do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> well, you know. If one person were to murder another, murder, yes, indeed. stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting, how you do it doesn't matter. If you, you must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. Oh no. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm a pro at murdering. <laughs> it's going to be easy. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. <laughs> John's ideal school. <laughs> a chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. <laughs> I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beats the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? Like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world. But you know, taking that hope and seeing it get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. And I just find that so darn exciting. What the hell? What the hell are you talking about? To kill each other, it's... It's... To kill each other is to kill each other. I'm sure there's a dictionary around here or somewhere if you need it. What are you saying? We know what it means. That's not the problem. Why do we have to kill each other? What? Yeah, stop blabbering on with this nonsense. Just let us go home already. Blabbering? Blabbering? <laughs> you guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go, let us go. You keep saying the same thing over and over and over. Listen, from this moment on, this school is your home, your life, your world. Got it? And you can kill as much as you want to kill. So go ahead, go on a kill, kill, killing spree. All right, come on. How long are you going to keep this up? Eh? You, know? you got us, okay? Scared the hell out of us. So you can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Huh? Reveal the trick? I'm right, right? Yeah, because I mean, you know, this is all some kind of trick and all, right? So, uh, like... Dude, shit. Dude, shut the hell up and get out of my way. Shoving Hiro aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rambling like thunder. You're fucking dead. Whoa. Listen up, asshole. This shit's gone too far. What the hell kind of joke is this? What's the matter? Joke? What do you mean? What? You mean like your hair? Oh, nice. Got him. Got him. And Sheila, you'll see uh, that still frame of 3D Monanu uh, Monokuna in a good number of times. Nice. I like that. You son of a bitch. Ah. Mondo roared out, and then there was a sudden boom. It was the sound of the floorboards as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew at Monokuma, fast and straight as a bullet. He'd locked down onto his target. <laughs> oh no. Got 
gotcha, you little piece of shit. I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds. What? The violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations. Shut the fuck up. Let me out of here, I swear to Christ. Oh, jeez. Hey, damn it. What? No smart ass comeback for this time? Piece of shit! Stop that goddamn beeping and say something. Sounds like it's a uh, ticking time bomb. Watch out! Watch out! Get rid of it! Huh? Hurry up and throw it! I don't know if her ferocity stunned him into silence or what, but without a word, he did what he was told. He threw Monokuna. And as soon as he did. Dang, it was a ticking time bomb. The hell? What the? That sure as shit wasn't a joke. It blew the hell up. There was a painful ringing in my ears, and I could smell gunpowder. Oh my goodness, double raid. What is going on? Elegant Frost. Welcome, raiders, to John Cadia. Frost, how are you doing? How was your stream? Let me give you a shout out real quick. Let's see, what were you working on? And Mayo Dongs. How's it going, Mayo? Welcome to the stream. That's not what I wanted to shout out. <laughs> wow, good job. Um, there we go. That worked out a little bit better. You were doing Buddy... The hell? Buddy Simulator 1984. What in the world is that? I've never even heard of that before. What kind of game is that? Sounds very interesting. Frost, thank you again so much for the raid and welcome everybody. We're currently playing for my first time ever, uh, Don Don Rampa, and it is wild. Totally crazy. You think I would like it, Frost? Ooh, now you got my attention. So what's what's the style of the game? Like, how, how do you play it? What's the interaction like? Is it like a puzzle game, an action game, Metroidvania? What is it? Buddy Simulator. It sounds like it should be a multiplayer game. Like some kind of weird physics-based multiplayer game. But with 1984 in the title, I'm not too sure. I bet that's like the uh, aesthetic of it. So there was a painful ring in my ears, and I could smell gunpowder. That, that bear thing just exploded. Explosions might happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's in real life, I never seen anything like it. Ooh, it's a horror game. You got my attention. And you're playing an old school terminal game with an AI who wants to be your buddy and makes games for you to play. That sounds very meta and cool. That sounds really neat, Frost. I'll have to check out a trailer. Awesome. Glad to hear you liked it. But, but you know, this means that the teddy bear has been destroyed, right? Hey! I told you, I'm not a teddy bear. I'm Monokuma. And he's back. What? There's another one. Damn you. you son of a bitch. You seriously tried to kill me just now. Of course. Well, yes. I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school's regulations after all. <laughs> so it's very happy times, and then things take dark turns. Well, when you say old school terminal game, do you mean kind of like a text adventure? It kind of reminds me of this horror game I played called... Um, uh, what was the name of it? Oh, it's missing me. It was like a collection of like three or five games or something. What was the name of it? I can't think of it. But what, the first one was called like the House Abandoned. And in that game, you were playing like an old text-based stories and told. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And the first one in that was called the House Abandoned. And it's kind of a text adventure. Really neat. I dug it. I wonder if that's anything like that. I'll let you off with a warning this time. But you better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. Oh, and it does have some text adventure, but it sounds like it's got a little bit of everything. That sounds really cool. Yeah, I'll definitely add that to my wish list. This is bad. Uh, hey, so does this mean there's like a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yep. Monokumas have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well, you just saw what happened, right? <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I won't be so forgiving with my punishment next time, so don't let it happen again. Huh? And that's not even punishment. That's just wrong. Well? 
Now then, lastly, to communicate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it the e-handbook. So clever. <laughs> um, yes, well, moving on. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses like or uses than that. It's also completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to that space age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all our school regulations, so make sure you review them, you review them thoroughly. You guys. You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. Shield. Rules restrict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be utter chaos without rules. Yes, the same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial that we have strict punishments in place for violators. Gosh, he's really creepy looking with his mouth open. He's got like, almost like a venom smile on the side of his mouth. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony to a close. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life and see ya. And with that, he was gone leaving us all in a state of shock. So guys, how would you define what we just experienced? What the crap? How? Why? I don't understand any of this. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it, Hearts? <laughs> we have to live here forever? Or kill? What? What just happened? Calm down. Everyone, we need to just calm down. First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that uh, each uh, is that we each stay here, living a communal life together until the day we die. And the other choice is, if we want to get out of here alive, we have to kill someone, right? But killing someone, that's... <laughs> We were abducted out of nowhere and stuffed into this place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is... This is... This is... What is this? Ridiculous. A lie and... For, and it is what it is. And those ridiculous things we've heard. They... This all has to be a fake. Hmm. Right now it doesn't really matter if it's real or fake. What matters is... Is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody has a response. Keeping myself quiet, I look around at the others. They all stared at one another, trying to gauge each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. They're all looking for the weakest one to kill. And that's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma has laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Mm -hmm. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. You know, the music's been great, but it also like changes all the time. Like we've heard so many songs and we're not very far into the game. <laughs> nice, Michael. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is somebody going to betray us? And that was how my new school, school life began. The school, which has come out of nowhere to raise my hope so high. It's not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. We saw that on the outside, like, or in the hallway, I think. Prologue. Welcome to despair. The end. Hey, that's the first little chapter. Surviving students 15. Oh, that's interesting. They give you how many survivors you have at the end of every chapter. I don't think I could have gotten anybody killed then. To be continued. Yeah, the way the bots do that now is they actually um, don't put
put a link in there because that would get blocked immediately. They try to fake it by removing the space. So actually what I have to do manually, because we don't have a um, mod in here right now, is go in here and ban it manually. Bam, and done. So wait, what's going on? Did it exit the game? It looks like we're at the intro again. Oh, I, I think it just plays it there all the time. And one appeared on uh, Jay's stream too. They also switched the links that they used before Bitly. Oh, that makes sense, Max, yeah. Yeah, if there's a blink, it's easy to get those blocked immediately, but uh, when they do that, it's a little bit truckier to catch them. I wonder what word you could key off of. I don't see it anymore, but uh, famous? Get rid of the word famous? <laughs> that usually catches them. Now the game's actually started, okay. I could probably skip this safely, right? We already watched part of this in the beginning. It is a cool intro, but I also don't want to look at it too much because I feel like it might be spoiling stuff. Oh, I love that retro style. We got an item. We received the school crest present. Hell yeah, let's save. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught to my throat as I thought about that. I could feel a paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. Oh, hard to get some good sleep. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope we get to see you again on Thursday. The air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. Chapter one, to survive daily life. Is that critter? fire missing a hand or is it supposed to look like that but as for heavy as the air felt all of it or all it took to pierce it was sharp words and? so what are you going to do now hey i just stand around or just stand around glaring at each other her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room it helped pull us back to reality <laughs> right he's right listen to me Sometimes, you're t if you're too nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward. <laughs> to forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself. I'm so ashamed. You hear me? Please, someone hit me. I can't forgive myself. Someone hit me, punish me. Oh, he likes it like that, huh? huh? Jesus. If you have to tell, or if you have time to tell about, to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. I love that saying. However, perhaps, but. What is the mission exactly? Stupid. What the? Let's see. Uh, and we totally need to find whoever was controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of it. But, but, but before we uh, do all that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is fine. True. If we stumble around with no clue what to the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. All right. So then... <laughs> Fine. Then let's hurry up and check out those stupid rules already. My guess is this e-handbook is where I can, like, do manual saves, maybe update the volume levels, which I haven't been able to do all stream. After turning on my e-handbook, the first thing I uh, that appeared was my name. So just like what Monokuma Kuma said, the owner's name showed up front and center. From then, the main menu that popped up, I selected the school regulations icon. Okay, an itemized list appeared on screen. It was the school regulations. In other words, the rules being imposed on us all. Oh, such a good soundtrack so far, Michael. Yes, 100%. Uh, students may only reside within the school. Leaving the campus is an unacceptable use of time. Rule 2. Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. Number four, with minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. And Frost, it makes you sad how so many games don't even change the settings for 20 minutes or don't have sound previews. Oh, seriously, it's so tricky. 
it's so tricky. Like right now, the volume level for Max is probably okay, but the sound effects and everything is like quieter than the music. So what I'm probably gonna do is turn down the music a bit and then turn up the stream volume so that the sound effects and voices are a little bit punchier. Rule five, violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destructions of surveillance cameras. That's what happened in the last scene, yeah. <laughs> oh, see, but you get those super loud logos. Oh, it's obnoxious. Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes a blacken will graduate, unless they are discovered. Number seven. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. That's not fair. <laughs> They're going to do it in the middle. Just to screw with us. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face uh, up from the screen. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone's face. Stop fucking around. This is bullshit. What kind of hell rules are those? I'm not going to let you, them control me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it kind of reminds me also, Hasifa, of like a movie when they have some like logos in the beginning. Especially like if you ever see one for THX, those used to always be three times as loud as a movie. It was so obnoxious. And Quantum Conundrum on PS3 has the loudest preview of the home screen that would always scare you. I hate autoplaying stuff in lists. My Netflix does that. And I don't see any way through the front end to turn it off, but I think there is a way to turn that off. Maybe on a PC? I haven't tried it yet. But I hate as I'm just browsing stuff on Netflix, I keep hearing like the first couple seconds of whatever I was just on. So she says, well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens when someone breaks one of the rules. However, but if it got us punished, like what we saw before, I don't think there'd be a respawn waiting for him. Touche. Touche. Yo. Ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it, even if it kills him. And <laughs> she goes, "So what? What?" I've made a ton of promises that I uh, still have to keep. That's what so what. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Hasika. I thought I'd read there was some way of doing it, but it wasn't like straightforward just through the menus. You know, you had to like think, log on to your account and do a few other things. But I can't afford to die here. None of that made much sense to me, but you are saying you will follow the regulations. Is that it? That's true. Huh? Oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, um, I have a question. My regulation... Oh. <laughs> uh, my regulation number six. So what do you... Uh, uh, what do you think it means exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate. Unless they are discovered. Tiny! What is going on, Tiny? Coming in to see this masculinity. I don't know. A little bit of everything in this game. How are you doing, Tiny? It's good to see you. How was your weekend? Oh, it, it can be done through app or browser. Maybe just not my phone, or not phone app, uh, my TV app. Sometimes those are a bit behind, but yeah, I'll definitely check that out and see what I can find, Aussie. But thank you again. You're talking about the second half, right? Where it says, unless they are discovered. I was wondering about that myself. It's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But why? Why do we have to do that? Great question. I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just worry about following the rules as they've been to explain to us. Such ignorance. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. And let's see, Tiny, you're doing all right. Your term is over, so you're off for two weeks, but sadly, the mom tested positive for COVID until, so until our trip, we're isolating separately. Oh, man, it's like, you want the good news or the bad news, right? <laughs> that sucks. I hope your mom's doing okay, and I hope you don't catch it. But uh, congrats on finishing your terms. That's awesome. Don't jab at me. Give me a break. More like a full-on stab. Well, for now, let's forget that silly junk about the murders or whatever. Okay. Now that we all know the rules, let's start exploring the school. Mm. Mm. 
We need to find out where exactly they are. This is... Or is there any way out? What about food and supplies? You understand? There are tons of questions I need to answer. Let's do it! Damn straight. Okay, let's get looking around. <laughs> I bet it's so hard. I don't know. Regardless of if I got sick or if Andy got sick, I would probably be quarantining in the room I'm in right now. Uh, we would block off the hallway because I have access to a bathroom and I have a futon in here I could sleep on if I need to. So I would just be stuck back there. And the dogs would, of course, not be allowed to come see me. They'd have to hang out with Andy so that, you know, they don't get sick. Apparently, I remember when this whole COVID thing first started, they did say that dogs could possibly catch it. I don't know how often that happens or if it's even really still a thing, but they did mention it. I'll be going alone. What? What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Someone here might have already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should stand around with them in our midst and make it that much easier for them? Uh, hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. That would never... What? Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you're all seized up with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. <laughs> Am I wrong? Uh, um... But... Hmm. So I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. Just hold on. Hold on. Uh, like hell, I'm going to let you run off and do whatever you want. What? Out of my way, Plankton. What? What? The fuck's that supposed to mean? Such ignorance. One tiny bit of Plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant, they couldn't possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless oceans. You're fucking dead. And Tiny, that's nice. Uh, you only have the one bathroom, so you've been chlorixing everything. Oh, how annoying. Every time you go in there, right? Oh, that would suck. Now, luckily, we have a guest bathroom, so I would just need my towels, my pillow, some blankets, and um, food. <laughs> food. Everyone else will feed me like a prisoner. Let's see. That text, Kermy? What do you mean, Hasiba? The guy says, I'm going to kick your ass. Stop it. We shouldn't fight. What? Uh, the fuck you just say? You some kind of goody-goody little bitch? <laughs> Whoa. You want to throw down? The guy that's saying the voice lines for this character kind of sounds like the Colonel in Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same guy, but it kind of reminds me of him. That's good to hear, Tiny. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, space between the letters. I got you, Hasifa. I hate it when that's not even. It's so annoying. No, I wasn't. You son of a bitch. F you. Wham. Uh-oh. What just happened? We got knocked out. He punched me. And I flew back in a heap. Oh, anytime, Tiny. Glad to help. Yeah. And I hope you get some good sleep. Hey, the longer you sleep... The less quarantining you have to do, <laughs> in a way. Let's see, it was like something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming. It was just a sudden right there in my face. On second, or one second I was standing there, the next I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I'd kind of forgotten the kind of people I'd been trapped here with. My common sense just stopped functioning. Being around all these ultimates had blown my fuse. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised it led to something as absurd as this. <laughs> there you go, Tiny. Life hack, right? So it's essentially the spacing between lowercase and everything else and just puts me off. And I hate it because I've got some like fonts I'd like to use for graphics and things, but when I start typing and using it, every once in a while, a word will have a weird extra space between two letters. And I'm just like, I can't use this. It's like, I got to either do, use some graphic manipulation to try to change that. Or I guess pick a different font. I guess that's the other option. <laughs> you don't have very many options. But I just lost track of that sense of reality. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade before it actually cut out completely. 
So he totally cold knocked us out, huh? And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was... Ooh. We took us to one of the hotel rooms. Chapter 1, The Unknown. I like that background music fixer right there. That's pretty cool. Uh, huh? Where am I? As if it had become a part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so where am I now? You now have access to the handbook menu. You can use this to check a variety of information as you play. Open the handbook menu by pressing the X button. You can use this menu to check out the school regulations and the character info in the report card section. At certain points, map and truth bullets may not be available. You can also save and load game data under the system section. Finally, press the back button to review the transcript. This records all pertinent info, so use this to refer comments from everyone involved. See, I love that little built-in log. <laughs> Playing Elden Ring, which I love, has no kind of quest log or anything. If somebody tells you something important, you should probably take a clip of it or even write it down somewhere just so you can figure it out later. Okay, and we're probably almost ready to go. We can check out this place first. <laughs> this must be the key to the room. My, my name's written on the keychain. That's weird. Oh yeah, there it is. M uh, Naga Nag Nagai? Um... Which means it must be mine, right? I'd better hang on to it for now. There we go. Okay, let me check these thing right here. Ah, we can go to system. Options. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Turn down... Even muted, do you still hear the music? There we go. Turn that down a little bit. And then I'm actually going to turn up the overall steam stream volume so that the sound effects and voices are a, a little bit more easy to, to let, hear from you guys. I think that should be good. Let me know if it gets too loud. Oh, there's all kinds of things to look at here. Let's look at the bed first. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly strange about the bed. <laughs> it's some kind of lint roller. I guess we're supposed to clean up after ourselves. Yeah, why not? Now, can I pick it up if I click on it a second time? Or does it just repeat itself? Ah, it just repeats. Okay. Almost exited. Another TV. It's some kind of monitor. Ugh. Look at another one of these windows. There's some kind of metal plate mounted here. I love the camera changing capability. There's some kind of metal plate mounted here. Is it Takiyo's all trapped in here? What about the guy there? Nope. Still can't do it. Never mind. Oh, that's right. You just painted sheets, huh? That might make them a little weird and gross. <laughs> For sure. What is this? It's a notepad. I guess the school must have given one out to each of us. Where's yours? You should take it. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing something, but I'm not sure what. Okay, so we can go down this way. Or we can take this elevator. Or not elevator, we can take this... Um, what is this? Is that the bucket it's selecting? It's just an everyday trash can. I don't see any kind of trap door or hidden compartments or anything. Hey, Derek! What's up, Derek? How you doing, dude? So there should be a button that highlights... Oh, yes! It's so nice! I love that feature. I, that's one thing that drives me crazy about these kind of games, is when you have to pixel hunt everything, and you miss stuff. And you come back and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just skipped that. Happened to me in so many games before. What is this thing? 
Uh, there's a piece of paper hanging up on the wall which says, Announcement from the Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to completely protect against tampering or lockpicking. Remaking an individual room key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at nighttime. Also, the bathrooms in the girls' rooms include a lock of their own. Finally, we prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit. For the boys, a toolkit. The sewing kit includes a map of the body's vital organs. One stab will do the job, girls. <laughs> For the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of the tools should be ample. Don't think, just feel. And let's all enjoy ourselves. I crumpled up the, the sheet of paper and threw it in the trash. You know, the way these things kind of move around, it kind of reminds me of like a little diorama I used to have at school or something. Okay, can we go this way? Looks like this door leads outside. It's locked. Some of the rooms have locks, huh? Wonderful. This would appear to be the bathroom. Oh, it's not opening. I guess it's like so... Hmm, I don't know. I feel like I've explored everything in here. Let's use this again. <laughs> Sexist bear. Wait, is it? Oh, we can open up this drawer. I think I might have missed this. It looks like there's something in the drawer. It's a toolkit. It must be brand new since it's still in the shrink wrap. I really don't need it right now, so I'll just leave it here. Never leave it there. That's a rookie mistake. Keep all your items with you. That's an adventure game. I think I'm starting to understand. This room must be... Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. <laughs> That's all he wants, Michael. Kind of reminds me of uh, that movie Battle Royale. Have you ever seen that? Where they essentially take a bunch of students, but... Instead of in a school, they take them to an island, give each of them a weapon, and their mission is to kill everybody, make sure everybody's been killed within three days. If more than one person's alive, they're wearing these collars that they can't remove, and the collars explode and kill them. Pretty intense. This is my assigned dorm room. Someone must have carried me here after I fell unconscious. So that answers that question. The next question is, what's everyone else up to right now? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get out of here. Let's go ahead and check this one more time. It's a bed. Feels pretty normal. Or looks pretty normal. Feels normal, too. I hope it didn't hurt that bed's feelings. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we gotta leave our room and go to everybody else's room and see what they're up to. Is this the exit? No, that's the bathroom. That's right. And it's locked, which is weird. This one. Leave the area. Yes. Oh, I forgot. I was going to um, fix the sound. I never did that. Did I? No, I, I fixed the sound. Yeah, we're good. I rushed out of the room to meet up with all the others. But there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Ah! Bam! Ah! The hell? Oh, she just fell. She must have crashed into me. <laughs> it happens. Oh, Sayaka? S sorry, are you okay? See, I could never do that guy's voice. I'm fine. I hope you're okay. Sorry about that. She had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood up slowly. She's the idol, right? I think she's the idol. Are you okay, Sayaka? Are you hurt? <laughs> make it sound worse than it is, I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I've actually built some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on stage. That's good then. Um... But are you okay? You know, from when Mondo hit you. That's true. I got knocked out right there in front of everyone. I guess I revealed my lack of cool right from the beginning. Makoto. Oh, um, I'm fine. Nothing wrong here. That's good. 
Oh, that's good. I was kind of worried. Thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Uh, um... Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me? Um, listen... Well, if you really are feeling better, I was hoping you could come to the dining hall. The dining hall? You see... After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. We decided it would be more efficient if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we uh, each found out. So does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. That's good. Good. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and meet you at the dining hall then. There we go. And <laughs> those room sprites, super highly detailed, you know? Like, I guess most of this is actually polygonal, but some of it, like in the very distance, could be more sprite based. Okay, well, I mean, I'm assuming not, nobody's in their rooms. Oh, the ones on the door. Yeah, they're pretty low res, for sure. <laughs> It looks like there's some kind of nameplate. The doors themselves all look pretty much the same. Okay, I thought we could knock or something. I love how fast you can go. Oh, this looks like the dining hall. Perfect. Whoa! Oh, I love that art style. That's really cool. This must be the dormitory dining hall. Um... It looks pretty clean, so that's good. Uh, I guess that's not really important right now, with us being prisoners here and all. Yeah, that's true. Nobody was there waiting for us. I don't really have much choice, but I guess we should just wait here for now. Hmm, okay, let's just wait here. And, uh, Bo or BG Derek, thank you so much for the follow, dude. I appreciate that. Huh, you heard that? Oh yeah, she can intuit what we're saying, she says. Although she sounds like she's a mind reader, right? Like I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on. I'm just kidding. Seriously. I just have amazing intuition. That's twice she's done that. Is it really just intuition? Yeah, I don't know about that. It's kind of sudden, I know, but here comes a tutorial. <laughs> it's a break in the fourth wall. Right now, I'd like to talk about reaction. You're going to be talking to Sayaka, right? Well, while you're talking to her, some purple words are going to appear. Here's how they work. Right. When purple words show up, you must press the Y button. If you press the Y button, you're going to reaction. At this point, you can use the directional buttons to make a selection and press A to confirm it. Also, when it comes to that dialogue, you can review whatever you talked about uh, to look for more info. Talking to someone about things like this is called a reaction. Okay, do your best and enjoy your ever-important school life. <laughs> okay, so can I do a save real quick? I'm assuming it's in there. Yeah, let's do one more save just in case I butcher this. I don't think we can do too much damage. By the way, Mikado. Huh? What is it? Um... Well, it's just... I know this is kind of continuing the self-introduction thing, but I wanted to ask you something. I think she was the one that wanted to ask us something and got cut off. Really? I wonder what she wants to ask me. Maybe I should ask her first. Hey, um... Is this all just a repeat? It seemed like... Oh, I didn't do the Y thing. Whoops. Totally forgot about um... it. There we go. And do I pick which one? Let's ask about the wanted to ask me something. <laughs> I just read that and it's still... I was looking for more of a pop-up kind of thing, Chavo. Like something moving on the screen. But no, you just press Y when you see that. It's not too hard. Uh, what did you want to ask me? Hmm. Makoto, did you happen to go to Black Root Junior High? Were you maybe in Class 2? Yeah, actually I was. <laughs> it's not abnormal, huh, Sifa? Yeah, the way they described it, I thought, like, oh, it's going to be a timed reaction. But it was just literally color text. That was it. Ah. I knew it. 
Is the game getting loud? I tried tweaking it a little bit, BG, because the music was louder than everything else. So we turned down the music, but then I turned everything else up a little bit. Let me turn it down a little bit again. Try this. Let's see how it is there, uh, Derek. Let me know. I knew it. I went there too. I was in class four, though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was, was that she remembered me. We'd never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. Hey, um... Hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm just surprised is all. I wouldn't have thought you'd remember me. <laughs> we went to the same school for three years. Of course I remember. Well, that's true, but there were lots of students in our grade, right? Plus, I never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I'm average at everything, and all my hobbies are totally normal. Even normal would call me boring. Aww. What are you talking about? You're so strange. Strange? That's... <laughs> I started giggling even louder. That somehow mysterious smile of hers made my heart grow calmer. Her smile was the nicest smile I'd ever seen. That's good. Anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here. <sighs> Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about all this. You're amazing, Mikado. No, no, I'm, I'm really not. I'm nothing at all compared to all of you ultimates. <laughs> but you're the one who helped me find my courage again. Not any of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. Okay. And to think... Right, and to thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. Really? <laughs> Seems like that'd be below you. Oh, dang, elegant. <laughs> That's intense. You, you got a sub, don't you, Frost? Huh. My assistant? <laughs> yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you as much as I can, so let's get out here together. When she sing says things like that, it... Just gets me pumped up, which is nice, but still, everyone else is still late. Besides that, I don't even know what time it is right now. There must be a clock around here somewhere. Yeah, it's like right behind you. <laughs> and you don't have a subwoofer. Wow, that's intense volume. Yeah, it definitely was too loud. So, uh, what time is it right now? What? Seven o'clock? At night? Uh, um... You were unconscious for a pretty long time. I see. Without being able to look at a window, I've lost all sense of time. Speaking of which, it's kind of a funny sidebar, but uh, if you ever go to casinos, you'll notice they never have any windows and they never have any clocks for this exact reason. They don't want you to know what time it is. They want you to get in there, start spending your money, and not like have any kind of curfew or anything, or realize how long you've been there. They're pretty smart. If I have to stay in this place for too long, I might go crazy. Forsaken! Yes, this game. I have not played this one. How you doing, Forsaken? This was recommended by Sheely, actually. Hey, um... I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. Almost like he'd time it, Taka threw open the dining hall doors right as Sayaka said that. Yeah, you can't take your phones in a casino, but like, you know, unless you're like looking at your phone all the time, it's one of those things that if you're busy playing games and you don't do that, you can't just like look at a window and see how dark it's getting. You just get lost. <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting. I, I enjoy gambling. I'm not like a huge gambler. Andy likes it a bit more than I do, but uh, it's fun when I do it. Mostly it's fun just to try to keep your money going as long as you can, because I always assume I'm, I'm going to lose my money and get some free drinks while I'm at it. That's fun. Hey. Ah, Mr. Makoto Sayaka. So you two got here first, huh? How unfortunate. Too bad. I was sure I'd beat everyone here. I guess that just means I don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time, I swear I'll win no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail. Very interesting so far, uh, Forsaken. Actually, I've only played two games I would think would be like this. Um, well, I guess three. Doki Doki Literature Club. Um, 
Ace Attorney, the first Phoenix Wright game, and then Spirit or Spirit Hunter Deathmark that we played pretty recently. And you're too stingy to risk gambling in a game. It's, it's very dangerous, very dangerous. I mean, if when I want to go gambling, Frost, what I do is you just think of it like you're going out to entertain yourself. You know, like if you would, uh, I'm just trying to think of something. It's hard to stretch your money too thinly, but um, if you're going to spend an hour or two playing arcade games or something, you're not getting that money back. That's how I treat gambling. It's like, okay, I'm going to take a hundred bucks for the for the trip and not spend any more than that. And Andy has a really good idea where any money that she wins in a machine or something, she takes it out immediately, and then that money she doesn't put back in the machine. So if she takes a hundred bucks, see, she's usually coming back with at least half that, even though she spends the entire hundred, or she might come out ahead sometimes. A lot of people get in this thing where they start to gamble their winnings, in which case you're definitely going to come home empty handed, unless you just hit big and leave, essentially. That was a crazy game, Forsaken. I could definitely see why you come out, you know, traumatized. And Retro Racer. My goodness, let me give them a chance to get through any advertising and things like that. Oh, let me turn it down just a little bit more. Yeah, I tried turning it down earlier, but the music in this game is pretty loud. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try turning down just the music in the game. Because there's very few sound effects, but it seems like it's kind of overpowered, doesn't it? Well, that's a bit much, don't you think? And they're probably here by now. Retro Racer, thank you so much for the raid. How are you doing, Retro Racer? What the heck were you playing? Let me give you a shout out there. Let's see here. You already got through the ads. Okay, sometimes I, always, I don't want to like do my introduction right away because if I do, you're probably still watching a commercial for something. So I try to give it a little bit of time. Nice. Oh, you were also playing this. Oh, that's awesome. Have you played this game before or is this your first playthrough? I have no experience with the series. This is my first time trying one, kind of going in completely fresh. It's very interesting so far. Thank you again so much for the raid. I appreciate that, dude. There it is. Gosh, what a late <laughs> thing. It popped up in the chat way before the alert actually happened. And you just finished the first chapter of your own blind playthrough. That's awesome, dude. Congrats. Yeah, same. I don't think I'm near the end of the first chapter. We did the prologue. I'm somewhere in the first chapter. Uh, so Sayaka says, that's a bit much, don't you think? And soon after that, everyone else came strolling in one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting. Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. It's interesting when they do their own voice acting because they do it so much more often than like Ace Attorney did, which had none, but it's like maybe not even 10% of the text, you know? It's kind of nice when it happens though. Although with a game like this, that, that had been a lot of work to voice over the entire game. Oh, I appreciate that, Retro. That's awesome. What are you talking about? Hmm. Uh, what about, uh, what's her name? You know, the silver haired girl. Ah. Oh yeah, Kyoko. Hmm. What about her? Aww. He's not here. What? I took another look around the dining hall. Sure enough, she was nowhere to be seen. Um... I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? But everyone just shook their heads. Huh? Wait, so nobody's seen her? Why hasn't Kyoko shown up? Could it be because... Yes, indeed! <laughs> oh no. Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting. How you do it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst po way possible. Is it possible? Was she really? Oh, that'd be terrifying. And Forsaken, this game is pretty long, if you recall. Uh, the playthrough you watch had 78 episodes that were all 30 minutes. Yeah, Forsaken, what I was kind of gathering from the game is that it's going to be longer than the games I would normally typically stream. Um, especially because it's a visual novel and uh, just by nature of the gameplay, 
streaming it goes five times as slow as playing it on your own because I can't really be playing while I talk to you at all because I have to stop reading the game, obviously. And then reading out loud takes longer than reading in your head. So, of course, that takes longer. So, yeah, based on the average play time I saw, it was, I think, in the 20-something hours. It probably take me more like 50 hours to beat this game, at least. You think a 30 to 40? Uh, definitely is going to add a lot to it. So, yeah, we'll probably do what I like to do with these um, games that are requested is if it's going to be too long, I want to at least give it a good... A couple week playthrough which is usually how long the games i pick to stream are usually about a week or two so we'll do like a full two weeks and get as far as we can experience as much as possible but to finish the game at 40 hours it'd probably take me like two months <laughs> to get all that in oh does fire emblem do the same thing retro racer oh that's cool <laughs> yeah there's some good voices though i wish there was more of them and Persona 3 Portable looking as you buy Asucha. How's it going? Never played Persona. But I imagine probably some similarities. No, no. I'm just overthinking things. She can't be dead. True. Was it on PSP? I thought this one was on Vita. Darn it, Kyoko. Are you really going to be late on your first day of school? Not only is she late, she didn't tell anyone she would be late. Uh, a most unbecoming personality trait. Come on. You're being a real jackass right now, you know that? <clears throat> well, what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. You hear me? Now then, I declare that the first session of the Hope's Peak Academy briefing meetings has begun. Um... Uh, Makato? Actually, first of all, I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. Hmm, you know? What's up? I feel like I really have become your personal assistant, don't you agree? I may not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I got. No, you've already done so much as my assistant. <laughs> you told me to talk to other people. Oh, it was originally on PSP and then ported. That makes total sense why the UI is what it is. I love these dioramas. It's also kind of funny how they are literally just like flat pictures, you know? Like if you ever played Doom, it also is a 3D game with sprites, but the sprites in that game, they actually kind of like follow you. So if like you were to turn, the the sprite also turns with you, if that makes any sense. It's kind of strange, but it works. It works. <laughs> yeah, I think so, Michael. <laughs> Oh, that's true. It did let me choose a um, resolution, which actually makes these scenes look very detailed. Like all these graphics look very fine, but some stuff is definitely lower res. This is probably the original graphics. So who can I talk to here? Oh, we can't talk to everybody. We already looked at the clock. Let's look at this. I don't think I should leave right now. The atmosphere is unpleasant. Oh, and you're headed off Forsaken? Oh, thank you so much, Forsaken. Yeah, I got to wrap up things pretty soon here too, but have a great night, dude. Yeah, like a shadow box. I was kind of saying earlier, kind of reminds me of a diorama. I can't actually like talk to anybody. Oh, you can also look up and down. Oh, wow. Yeah, my monitor is uh, 2K essentially, uh, 1440p. A surveillance camera. I hate the idea that somebody might be watching me right now. As much as it gets on my nerves, I better leave it alone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to try to change... Um, what was that? I just unlocked something. I was going to try to drop the music volume down. I forgot about that. I think it's in this menu. I already have it pretty low. Let me know how this is. Well... Let's go down too. Let's go here. Let's see how this is. I still want the voices and everything to like be loud enough. It just seems like the music, even though it's at a low level, is still like super low. Oh my goodness, Snow! How are you doing, Snow? Long time no see. What have you been up to? Great to see you. Okay, let's keep it there and see how that sounds. I think the sound effects lower too. In fact, I could probably just lower the whole thing. Let's see. Well, no, because I need the desktop. I'll probably do the game volume. 
Try this. Yeah, because I, I want the um, my sound overall to be loud enough because like the alerts and stuff also follow the same volume. So I'll probably leave that volume there and we'll just turn these down. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so what else can we look at? I think I could just talk to her. Um... Okay, so since you're in the dark about all this, let me lay out what's been going on. Everyone split up to investigate different parts of the building, but... You see? Oh, now I press Y. So Biaka, <laughs> I love that sound effect. Biaka and Taka each went off on their own, so did Kyoko. I wanted to try and find some clue as to who's responsible for imprisoning us here. But unfortunately, I made no such discoveries. That's all for me. <clears throat> really? Is that it? <clears throat> if I'd uncovered anything, naturally I would have more to say. But I don't, so I don't. Uh... Right, understood. Oh, and then I can, I guess, do this again and check the other option, right? And uh, Frost, you find in a lot of games, they balance the sound effects and the music super loud, and you can't hear the voices unless you max them. I hate that so much. I really do. And Snow, you've been busy with studies? Oh, I bet. And you finished a, a group short animated film? What? I want to see that. That looks so cool. Is it something like on YouTube or anything when you finish the final project? That's awesome. Congratulations on doing that, Snow. That's great. I've never played one of these games. This was a request from Sheely, but super excited to check it out. Okay, so Taka says, I spent some time looking around the dormitory and... Listen to me! There I made the discovery of the century. I found that there were exactly one room for each person. Uh, well, yeah, I figured that out before anything else. Yeah. Each door already has a nameplate on it, so I guess all the rooms have been assigned already. Huh. And each room key is attached to a keychain with the owner's name and precision etched onto it. Which confirms that the room I was in earlier is in fact my room. And plus. And Chihiro and I found out that all the rooms are totally soundproof. Um. Your next door neighbor could scream their lungs out and you wouldn't hear a thing. Like if they were being murdered. <laughs> well, each room also had a private bathroom, which could also lock. Only the ladies' rooms. Hmm. But it looked like there were only locks on the bathrooms in the girls' dorms. Huh? But when I checked my bathroom uh, door before, it definitely seemed like it was locked. That's weird. I should double check that later. Yeah, we did try to open that and it was locked. Hey, come on. Okay, so they got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're assuming we're gonna be here for a while. Quiet down and listen! Well, better to have than are better to have than have not. At least we don't have to worry about surviving like wild animals. <sighs> that can't be all you have to report, can it, Mr. Honor Student? Got it! That's all for my report. Let's move on to whoever's next. <laughs> oh, it is on YouTube, Snow. Uh, it's a, just an unlisted video. But you could share it later on the server if you like. Oh, I'd love to see it. That would be so cool. Absolutely. Nice. Now I'm glad to finally jump into one of these games. It's like, it's a series of games I've heard a bunch of times, but never looked into it. I have no idea what it's really about. It seems like we do all of our talking through her. Um, okay, so she repeats herself a few times. You see. Here we go. Now we can look up more. So it looks like Leon, Hiro, Junko, and Chihiro all grouped up together. Mm. We went... Uh, all up and down the school, double checking the windows and the hallways and classes. We wanted to see if we could get any of those metal plates to come off. And what happened was, hmm, nothing. Not a damn thing. We couldn't get a single one to budge, even a little bit. What should I do? There wasn't any hope of escape anywhere. The school really has been totally cut off. This is bad. This sucks. Bad, 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 it bad. It really sucks. It sucks, 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 sucks. What the hell are we going to do? Hey, come on. God damn. Calm down. You're starting to make me nervous. Um. You see. Okay, so if you press B, you can skip through the dialogue a little bit faster if I know we're repeating stuff. The same goes for Hina, Sakara, uh, Sakura, and Mando. 
check out that one. Hmm. We thought maybe we could find some way to communicate with the outside, so we went looking all over. Sorry. But we didn't find a thing. Sorry. Yo. I went back to the main hall, thinking maybe you could do something about that giant hunk of metal. What? But even with what? Sakura and me both, it wouldn't budge. We hit it with desks and chairs and nothing. Ugh, shit. It was hard as, like, metal. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, yes, it is metal. <sighs> anyway, this sucks. if we're going to get out of here, it's not going to be through there. Aww. I feel like I could just cry, but no, I have to hold it in. I have to manage my hydration. Oh, yeah, I, I, I guess that's not a mechanic that kept going through the uh, other games. It's an interesting idea, but it does seem to make you go through the same dialogue multiple, multiple times to see everything. So then. I shall tell you what happened next. It has nothing to do with the communicating with the outside world, but it's still worth worrying about. In both the school and dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading to another floor. But... But there were gates there, and we couldn't find any way to open them, so we couldn't check it out. Hmm. In other words, at this point, we are only able to search the first floor. However... We can further assume that there is potentially something above the second floor as well. And if that's the case, then there is a chance it may lead to a way out. Oh, um, you see. And then Celeste, Toko, and uh, Hifumi. Let's see. If I'm being honest, I can't quite say we acted as one. Rather, we did nothing as one. We spent the entire time in the gym. <laughs> They're the lazy group. Most unfortunate. Honestly. It, uh, we are not exactly the type to go running around a school like a gaggle of junior detectives. What the hell's wrong with you? What the hell are you thinking? Just sitting around the gym the whole time. <laughs> well, it's not like any of you invited me along. Nobody said, hey, come with us. I blame you for leaving me out. It's your fault. What the? If you wanted to go with someone, you should have just said something. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Like I'd want to go anywhere with a dirty slut like you. Whoa! Uncalled for. What the hell is that all about? Huh? Slut? <laughs> your mind is as thin as your body. You make me sick to my stomach. Are you for real? I don't even know how to react. How can you say something so awful to someone you've just met? Right? They don't know each other. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, Chavo. Yeah, so it's kind of a, an adventure game, too, where you're going to get, like, I think, puzzles and different things you have to react to and then depending on the choices you make and what you solve i think there's different endings you can get as well hey come on all right guys just everybody calm down okay all this stress is bad for your skin you know <laughs> yeah toko dropping names <sighs> yeah it sounds like you two are so close now you're fighting like sisters i don't think that's what's going on sayaka hey um so that's what they have to say, huh? Well, then I guess I'm the only one left. And what the hell did you do? Um... I went and had a look around the dining hall. I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen, and it was overflowing with all kinds of stuff. That's good. I guess we don't have to worry about food, at least. Well, that's good. But... Sure, for now. But even with all that, there are 15 of us. How long can the food last? You can just eat sesame seeds or something. Mm -hmm. What? What am I, a parakeet? <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about it. All the food gets restocked automatically each day. Um... At least, that's what Monokuma said. That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. You saw him? Okay. Yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge. Told me that, and then disappeared again. Relentless, how you doing, Relentless? Let's see, you just woke up and have to leave for work in 10. We want to drop in and say hi. Hi, how's it going, Relentless? Good to see you. Good luck at work. I know this is super early for you, but it's great to see you. And the lazy group is the top of your suspect list now. 100%, Michael. <laughs> 100%. And it's mostly chatty now because it's still sort of a visual novel, but it picks up later. Yeah, these games definitely heavy on the dialogue. Heavy on me reading, so be prepared. So far, so good. I don't believe I've killed it. Well, 
I don't think I killed them relentless, but somebody's missing. They could be dead. I don't know yet. <laughs> They're not at the meeting, so I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> he was so fast. I can't believe someone could have been moving him around with a remote control. That's... A weaponized toy can disappear from nowhere. I can't tell if we're supposed to be afraid or not. You should be very afraid. But... But that was everything, okay? He didn't try to, like, eat you or anything? <laughs> eat her? Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, when you say eat, what kind of eating are we talking about? Oh my god. Seriously, Hifumi? <laughs> this guy's gonna get bonked every time he opens his mouth, isn't he? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, Relentless, you should always be worried when playing these games. <laughs> and Sheila, you really enjoy this game? It's not exactly great or anything, but you really find it fun. And that's so funny, because I have the same thing, Sheila, with Phantasmagoria. Objectively, it is not a good game in, like, almost any way. But I love it. I mean, I played it when I was young. I just have so much nostalgia for it. It's gruesome. It's just crazy. Oh, Chavo, I'm in California. If you're asking me, like, you know, physically where I'm at, I'm in California. Oh! Come on, man. <laughs> hey, you bastard. What the hell, fatty? You're acting like some kind of sleazy, uh, sleazy drunk dude. Actually. Not like there's a good kind of drunk. Hey! Hey, stop screwing around, all of you. Are you still asleep or something? We're prisoners here. We could all die any second. Ugh, shit. She's right. We can't be making stupid jokes right now. We gotta do something, or... A voice cut out through the noise, interrupting Mondo. <laughs> yeah, where are you mentally? <laughs> Not in the gutter like that guy. I can tell you that much. And Sakurai is your second favorite, and you're a Chihiro fan. How about the rest of you that are familiar with this game? Who's your guys' favorite character? You're all spending an awful lot of time yelling and carrying on. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is her. Do you really think you can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? Yo! Kyoko, where the hell have you been? We already started the meeting without you. Okay, good, she's not dead. She didn't say a word. Instead, she just dropped a piece of paper on the table. And Snow, you're a Sakura fan as well? Nice. And Relentless loves Chihiro, Mondo, and Sakura equally. Can't pick a favorite. <laughs> They're all so, so good. Huh? What's this? It appears to be a map of Hope's Peak Academy. A map? What the? Where did you find this? Well... It doesn't matter where I found it. What the heck? It does matter. You're really freaking us out right now. But more important... Never mind that. What's it mean? It would seem... Just look at it. The building we're in right now is laid out in precisely the same way as Hope's Peak Academy. So what you're saying is, this really is Hope's Peak Academy? It's true. Well, in terms of construction, yes. But it looks like it's had a number of strange renovations done to it. Renovations? However... I don't know all the details yet. All I found was details about the first floor. Um... But then, this really is Hope's Peak. We didn't get kidnapped and taken to some other place. <sighs> so stupid it's not even possible. This is where the country's future elite are supposed to come and learn. But... But if it really is Hope's Peak, where are all the other students? <sighs> Maybe on the other floors. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. Let's try to stop talking about this. You know, negative stuff. <laughs> this guy's always like, you're bumming me out, dude. <laughs> and she's got the muscle and the cool personality. Now, Sa Sakura, she's the um, martial arts expert, right? And, and Chavo, you just went to get the dogs? You think you missed a lot. Somebody found a map to the place. That's what we're go going over right now. But... Aren't you worried? Things don't look good. Yo! Worried? There's, what's there to be worried about? I mean, this was all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hope's Peak put all this together, right? <laughs> Man, if I got stressed every time something like this happened, I'd have ectoplasm shooting out my mouth. You know? But things come to those who wait, right? So if we just gotta chill and everything will work itself out. <laughs> what 
That's your problem. Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> I'm just happy, that's all. It seems splitting up to investigate was a good idea after all. <sighs> Haven't you been listening? Looking around was a total waste of time. We didn't find a way out. We didn't find who's behind all this. We still have no idea what's going on. Oh. Huh? Is it not crystal clear to you what's going on? Are you okay with this? It is perfectly obvious that we have been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out. None of us had any response to that. We didn't want to accept that reality, but it was staring us right in the face. <laughs> you didn't have to go and say that. I was trying to not think about it. N no way out? We're trapped here. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. Stop it! Don't even joke about that. Um... Everyone just calm down, please. We, we need to stop and think about what to do from here. Seems like... There's got to be something we can do. <laughs> All we can do is adapt. Adapt our, to, our, our, to living our lives here from now on. That's... Live here? Are you saying we should just accept it? Do you understand? A lack of adaptability is a lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who is the strongest or smartest. It comes down to who can adapt. Very true. Actually... As someone who, comes, who came out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. What? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. We all understand that we are trapped here, which means we'll be, we will be spending the night. However, you all remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? Let's see, it's from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. And sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. Let's see. So, regarding this nighttime, I think we need to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? <laughs> Going out at nighttime should be prohibited altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us not to go out at night. I would like to make it official. Huh? But why? Are you okay with this? The way things are right now, every time night comes, we will all start to get worried and anxious. <laughs> we will all be afraid someone might try and come kill us. Huh? What? <laughs> if we have to worry about that night after night for who knows how long, it will wear us down in no time. I see. So you're suggesting we limit our activity to night as an often preventative maintenance. Indeed. However, unlike the other rules, nobody can be forced to comply. We all have to agree to follow it. What can we do? I see what you mean, but I think I can agree to that. It's like... It's like the little goth Lolita said. Without something like that, we're just going to self-destruct. I like that goth Lolita. Listen to me! On behalf of all the men here, I agree to comply. Hey, you don't speak for me. What? Hey, you can't just speak for us. This is fine. So, everyone is in agreement? Good. <laughs> then, if you will excuse me... Huh? Huh? Wait, what, where are you going? Let's see... It's almost nighttime. I want to take a shower before it arrives. 100% the first night, Michael. I hope you are well. So, goodbye. I also feel a little bit sketch about her. Why was she so quick to come up with that idea, you know? I feel like she has something planned. Moving with pure elegance, Celeste left the dining hall. Remember, she's also like the best liar because she's like a gambling expert. Her behavior seemed so natural, I couldn't imagine anyone even trying to stop her. Um... So, I guess it's pretty obvious where we go from here. We'll be spending the night, it looks like. Huh. Adaptability. Hmm. So, Mr. Chairman, what's next? One person already left. <laughs> um, well then. What I say we call an end to today's meeting. You understand? Like she said, it's almost nighttime anyway. We could reconvene first thing tomorrow morning, just not before seven. <laughs> huh? Do we really have to stay the night here? What can we do? We don't have a choice. We can't go for long without getting some sleep. Oh, this sucks. So we just have to give up. <sighs> That's all fine and good today, but what do we do tomorrow? So in the end... Our only option is to split up and look around again. 
and let everyone know if we find anything. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Aww. Then we're done for today. Good, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Not everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. With heavy movements, everybody headed off to their private rooms. Um... And nothing bad will happen the first night, come on. <laughs> Uh, Makoto, are you ready to call it a day? Yeah, let's go. I love the art style of this game. This is cool. Did it still do this, like, 3D thing on the PSP? Just, like, obviously much more simple. Is this really where I'll be staying for the foreseeable future? Oh, that's right. I should check the bathroom one more time before I go to bed. Only the girls' bathroom should have locks on them, right? Okay, this is perfect time to save. We're going a little bit over, <laughs> unfortunately. With these kind of games, you get into like a rhythm of, you know, the chats and dialogue where you don't get a chance to like save for possibly 20, 30 minutes, which is what happened. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and save it. And if it lets me, call it here. It looks like you can save anywhere, which I really like. Um... I'm going to go ahead and just have a four rotating save slots. Once I go to the fifth one, it scrolls down. So we'll just do four. You think it was identical, but probably lower resolution? That makes sense. That makes sense. I know, Michael, right? What's funny is when we start the next one, I'm going to have to try to remember. I'll, I'll try to remember to watch the end of the stream just to keep my memory intact. But bathroom. We have to investigate the bathroom. That's the first thing we got to do. And then we're probably going to bed. <laughs> Good stuff, though. Good stuff. I can't wait to see more. Unfortunately, stupid work. I do have to wake up super early. I have to get up in... I have to get up in eight hours. Exactly. And I still have to brush my teeth, get my food ready, shower. By the time I do all that, maybe I'll get six and a half hours. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> stupid responsibilities. Cool game, though. I'm really digging it. Oh, there's also a chapter select. Oh, that's pretty cool. So based on this, are there five chapters total? Kind of good to kind of know where you're at in the game. Would you like to save your changes? Yes. Did I save anything? I don't think so. I think we already saved it. There we go. Awesome game though. Good choice, 